Have you ever wanted to participate in highly secretive covert military operations? Do you feel the need to assert your dominance on the local populace and wildlife? Would you like to set your military burner at full mast? If you answered yes to any of these questions, I have the perfect game for you. Welcome to Armed Assault 3, a game built upon intense militaristic and the rejection of simple-minded primitive concepts like morality, empathy, and the Geneva Convention. Armour 3 is a modern military simulator that sells itself on high realism and accuracy. In Armour, you play as modern military male number 3382, complete with sweet cardio, skin-tight diving suit, and intense nightmares from the war crimes he has bared witness to. Of course, it's not necessary to play as a military guy, as there are plenty of mods for changing your player model to whatever you want. I find that the LEGO player models strike a good balance between realism and psychological torment. The game is set in the fictional nation of Greece, a barren, dry, suspiciously debt-free war zone. The base game takes place on two scaled-down islands in the Aegean Sea, Altus and Stratus. Armor 3 is a true sandbox experience. Each server you join will have a unique community, mod set, game mode, and mental disorder. The game is what you make it. If you want to pretend to be a bunch of Delta Force commandos, brutally eradicating every door you come across, go for it. Maybe you would like to participate in a combined arms exercise as a fast jet pilot, flying high above the battlefield with larger than average moral separation from your terrible crimes. Perhaps you would like to roleplay as Jedi Master Yoda and run people down in your 2001 Honda Civic. All of this, and much more, is possible in Armor 3. In my many hours of playing this game, I've only spent significant time on three main game modes. King of the Hill, Exile, and On occasion, I'll hop into another game mode like Altus Life, but I've never really seen the appeal of mining salt for six hours, only to get dropped by some bandits with high-powered autismo rifles two kilometers away. 100 meters, right up ahead! Man, 100 meters, front! Armor 3 has a single player, which you can play and then immediately forget about. I'm sure plenty of people have found lots of value in these single player experiences, but in my experience, the friendly AI has undergone total nervous system breakdown and doesn't seem to understand how to move their legs in the correct direction, while the enemy AI has possession of the world's greatest super soldiers, capable of spotting you from several hundred meters away without even looking. I'm not saying that the single player campaigns are bad, but reloading the game several times because you remove the lower half of your body via landmines isn't the most fun. Single player will never be a replacement for the true specimens you can meet on multiplayer servers. Remember, the game is a modern military simulator, and it sells itself on its very high realism, something it does quite well. Here are some examples. 1. There are approximately 7,824 different positions your character can occupy. What the f*** is that? Standing up. Standing up, but... Oh, oh, no. Standing up and to the right. Leaning to the right while standing to the right. Crouched, but up a little bit. Ooh, ooh, ow, my thighs. Ooh, ooh, ow, ooh, ah, ooh, my thighs. Ooh, ooh, firing. Ooh, ah. Crouched. Crouched and standing to the right while leaning to the right. Crouched low to conceal movement. Sitting down for a nice chill time, and so you can scrape your ass along the pavement. Lying down prone. Lying down prone while leaning to the right. And finally, looking for something under the couch. Oh, I'm sure it's down here. Come on, where is it? Oh, where is it? Your character can also perform incredible feats of acrobatics and strength. Ooh, look at that core strength. Mmm. Nice. The Holy Spirit said to me, just manifest the power of the blood. Two. Really p weak cardio. Come on, dude, just hurry up. It's not even that heavy. Just hurry up. Jesus Christ, dude. Hurry up. Hurry up. My man in his standard issue military boots will struggle immensely when the grade is over 15 degrees. On the other hand, walk on a big rock or other prop and you turn into Delta Force f Spider Man. 3. The Ballistic System. There's this really good video from like 2016 about the bullet mechanics in this game that summarizes everything you need to know. Basically, the devs decided to make their lives more difficult by introducing heaps of factors like bullet drop, wind resistance, penetration depth, material penetrated, the energy of the bullet, deflection angle, and the sound the bullet makes depending on velocity. 4. Bullet damage, i.e. just about every gun in this game will kill you in one shot. 
The game suffers from some pretty extreme balance issues when some players only have access to 556 rifles, which are basically automatic beanbag guns, while other players have access to high-powered sniper rifles that can go through six buildings and exit out the other side. Don't let the weight reduction fool you. Anything below 762 kinda sucks. 5. The big and very nice map. For a game released almost 7 years ago, it still beats out modern games like PUBG and Warzone. The main map Altus is around 270 square kilometers, and every single one of those is well detailed and nice. Except for these fences. These fences can f*** right off. 6. The Advanced Helicopter Flight Model. There are two genders in this game, Standard and Advanced. Much like driving an automatic, people who use the base flight model are perfectly reasonable and are using their helicopter as a means of getting from one point to another. Then, there are the people who drive stick, and they use the advanced helicopter flight model to flex how much of a milsim operator they are, and how wide their scrotal tissue is. I couldn't tell you how many times some complete numpty in King of the Hill believes he is the greatest helicopter pilot on planet Earth, only to smash directly into the telephone pole they were trying to go under. 7. The Big List of Optics Do you like seeing deeply into the soul of the life you are about to extinguish? Do you feel the need to be able to precisely pinpoint the location and distribution of an enemy's nasal follicles? Fear no more. With this wide array of weapon optics, no nose hairs will remain unaccounted for. Maybe you need to precisely locate and terminate local wildlife with assistance from heavy airborne ordnance. For this job, my money is with the thermal and night vision helmet, the most effective way of locating and terminating members of the local ecosystem. For only 7 easy payments of $49.99.99.99, this revolutionary product can be yours. So what are you waiting for? 8. The constant feeling of impending doom. I'm not going to pretend I know what it's like to be in a real war zone, but between the documentaries and footage I've watched, I would imagine that you're either constantly being watched or feel like you're being watched, and there's nothing you can do about it. No other game I've played truly captures the feeling like a pair of beady eyes watching you like Armor 3. There could only be you and one other human being online in the 270 square kilometers of altars, but I'm still checking the hilltops, listening out for disturbances, and keeping a low profile. I think it says a lot about the realism in the game when you subconsciously realize something isn't right before spotting someone. Oh no, I don't have life insurance. Welcome to King of the Hill. An exercise in extreme mental endurance as you withstand your teammates' best attempts at causing catastrophic intracranial hemorrhaging. In Koth, there are three teams each fighting for control of the zone. Each team starts around 2 kilometers away from the zone and needs to stand inside to win. Every 45 seconds, a point goes to the team with the most players in the zone. Your team wins once you accumulate 100 points. Pretty simple and very enjoyable. Koth games will last around 3 hours and run at a much faster pace than other game modes. The objective of Koth is very simple. Collect money, get guns, destroy vehicles, and kill. Now how would one go about doing this? Well, like this. Remember DayZ? Well, Exile is a little like DayZ, but actually fun. Instead of zombies, there are soldiers that occupy missions and drive around the map in vehicles. You play as a prison inmate sent into exile from the sky. Yeah, right? You begin with a very stylish orange jumpsuit and on occasion are given access to the most deadly, powerful vehicle in the game. The bicycle. Just like in current circumstances. Loot of different qualities can be found inside buildings and other structures. Unlike DayZ, finding a gun is pretty easy, but finding powerful guns takes a bit more searching. Oh, sh Several missions with various difficulties are dotted around the map for you to complete. Completing missions will award you with a crate filled with loot, and sometimes a vehicle. 
The quality of the loot and vehicle depend on the difficulty of the given mission, which can range wildly. Some missions have AI that kill you the instant you are visible, oh my God. while other missions have AI that don't even need to see you to kill you. Pretty much all AI is constantly on high alert and do not mess around once they find you. The loot collected in missions can be sold in the safe zones on the map. These are areas where players are invincible and can go to buy and sell stuff. Exile has some rudimentary base building features, but lacks any real main objectives other than collecting that cash and murdering other players in the server. Which is fine. Murder is good. Exile is much more infantry focused and usually restricts the vehicles to just transports. This is probably a good thing for balance, but it removes a lot of the fun in getting really powerful vehicles and abusing them. Exile adds a few vehicles, which range from completely pathetic to mostly useless, and just about all of them will explode upon tapping a tree branch. Now I used to play on this pretty kooky server a couple of years back. The server was a PvE only server, meaning you couldn't go around whacking other players, which really removed a lot of the fun. It also had several mods, like changing the map, adding more weapons and enabling some of the really OP vehicles. After completing a few missions, my friends and I went back into the safe zone to sell our gamer loot and buy some stuff. Oh, yep. I distinctly remember a modded sniper we had picked up came with a scope already attached. Inside the sell menu, you can directly sell the scopes off of weapons without needing to take them off. So I did. Only problem was, the scope didn't go away. Hmm. I tried again, and the scope remained, but I still got the money for selling. Oh no. Pretty quickly, my friends and I had all bought the same gun and were selling scope after scope after scope. All was well and we were slowly but surely gaining some serious gamer cash. Each scope sold for around 50 pop tabs, which is not a lot, so to gain any decent amount we'd have to sit here and sell for many hours. We then realised that there were other weapons that came with more expensive scopes. So we used those to boost each sale to around 100 tabs. This was pretty good, but still quite slow. Then we made a real gamer discovery. The Thermal Weapon Scope. This one sold for 500 tabs each. Truly, some good money. But then we made an even more realer gamer discovery. I don't really understand why, but when we sold a scope while it was inside a vehicle, the scope remained, but it also duplicated itself. Oh no. This meant that the first sale would sell one scope and turn it into two, the second two into four, the third four into eight, you get the idea. Naturally, we have used this so extremely hard that we rapidly became the Saudi princes of this crappy exile server. Like any Saudi prince would, we immediately spent all our money on a large quantity of military equipment. I distinctly remember having a friend fly around in a Harrier jump jet, while another friend and I flew around in a Russian attack helicopter. We pulled up to a mission to enact cruel justice upon the lobotomized AI and began laying down the law. Only thing was, the AI was not lobotomized, and we got domed by AI Chris Kyle after about 3 seconds. Well, Dang. Naturally, we thought this was some bullshit and complained profusely to the server admins. This was a terrible mistake. I don't really know what strain of quirk they were smoking, but they got it in their heads that the friend flying in the Harrier had killed us, and because this server didn't allow PvP, he needed to be banned. But they didn't ban him. They banned a different friend who wasn't even in the same area. Then we all got our dicks in a knot and continued arguing until they banned another one of us. Nice going, dudes. Later, the rest of us got understandably banned for all the legally and ethically acquired gamer cash. And such was the end of our... Scuffed Duplication Adventures. Welcome to the Wasteland. Truly the best game mode. Wasteland is the natural extension of Exile, where the entire map is open for missions and murder. There are several types of missions in Wasteland, each giving you either weapons, cash, or both. Wasteland tends to focus much more on vehicular combat, which I find more fun than just strictly infantry. There are no safe zones, and nowhere is safe. Money is collected by completing missions and gently convincing other players to stop living. Money can be spent in several different shops dotted around the map. The shops sell weapons, vehicles, and extra equipment for your team. 
Wasteland missions tend to give lots of money and the weapons and vehicles are fairly cheap. This means that players gain access to the kooky sh** of Armor 3 pretty quick. In Wasteland, there are two main teams and several independent teams fighting. Independent is really fun if you like dying over and over again, so unless you only go alone, I would suggest joining one of the two main teams. Similarly to Exile, there isn't really a goal in Wasteland other than collecting lots of cash and performing lots of murder. Wasteland separates itself from Exile in the creativity you have in performing said murder. In Exile, the flexibility you have in approaching a mission is limited, and the weapons you have access to all tend to function the same. Drive or fly up to a mission or bad guy, and then shoot them with a gun. In Wasteland, there are a much larger number of ways you can tackle a given challenge. Let me explain. On the map, there are several gun stores for buying weapons. These stores are good for gearing up to take on missions and other players. But, whenever you go inside one, your location is broadcast to the entire server. Oh no. So let's say I'm over at the airport and I see an enemy has entered the gun store. I now have several options. Maybe I should quickly buy a cheap car, drive over, set up on a hilltop, and gun them down to collect their cash. This could work, but driving around on an open road is quite exposed and fairly slow. Oh no. So how about I get a transport helicopter and fly over? Helicopters are much quicker, so it's more likely they'll still be inside the store once I get there. This is good, but it's loud and still requires you to locate and kill the enemy with a handheld weapon. This wouldn't be good enough if they brought a vehicle, which is very likely in Wasteland. How about we go to a separate gun store and buy a rocket launcher? This is a good option, but the other gun store is quite far away and he will have likely moved on by the time I get there. Okay, how about we get a tank and drive over? Well, this is really slow, but also extremely powerful. So instead, we buy a tank, unlock it, and go buy a helicopter. Then we can sling load the tank and fly it over to the store. This gives us significantly more firepower in the event they have a vehicle, but is also expensive. Maybe instead of doing that, we buy an attack helicopter and deliver heavy ordnance from the air. This is also a valid approach, but is also expensive. And you can quite easily buy an anti-air launcher from the gun store to shoot helicopters down. Hmm. How about we buy a jet and deliver even heavier airborne ordnance? That would work quite well, but now you have a jet, which is expensive and very tedious to keep around. We'd also like to get his cash, and having a jet around really complicates that. Maybe we should buy a simple armed car, drive up, and shoot them with the minigun. This is cheap, and probably quite effective. Or maybe we should buy an artillery piece and deliver gun store eviction notices from the comfort of plushy, warmed seats. Or instead of showering him in high explosives, we send out hundreds and hundreds of mines around the perimeter of the gun store. Or how about we purchase an entire Air Force worth of attack drones to completely cover the entire map. I like this option, because it makes me feel like Barack Obama. Each drone is quite cheap, and very balanced. The drones have these thermal cameras that can basically see everyone on the map. Very good. We'll choose this option, and fly in with a helicopter simultaneously. Once we delete his soul from existence, we land and collect all his money. All $14. Good stuff. Now I love Wasteland, but there has always been a lack of servers available to play on. In the OCE region, there aren't any servers at all anymore. This ain't good. I looked into it, and most people seem to think it's because the vehicles are far too powerful for far too cheap. I agree. If only someone were to do something about this. So, I decided to make it happen, and I've taken it upon myself to solve this terrible problem. Welcome to the Bean Zone. Wasteland. This server is now available for playing on. I'll probably keep it around for a few months and get rid of it once I'm sick of it. It's got 20 slots, which is probably not enough, but I'll keep it like that for the time being. I've made some balance changes in the price of vehicles, and made the game generally feel a bit more balanced. Powerful weapons like anti-aircraft and anti-tank launchers are a little more expensive. Armed vehicles are also now more expensive. I've made territory capturing much more lucrative so people will actually go for it. I've added the really fast, powerful jets, and I've added proper, spooky artillery. Now I'd love to get some custom missions and properly integrate mods into the server, among some other things, but my experience is basically zero, so we'll have to wait and see if that happens. To accompany this server, I've also set up a Discord. This is a place where you can profess your love of all things bean-related. Much like the armor server, I also have no idea what I'm doing, so bear with me while we get things sorted. The join links for the Discord will be in the description, so come on down and tell me my videos smell bad. So there we go. Armor 3. A great game. Join my server, become a member of the Blue 4 Republic, and enjoy the Obama lifestyle. Obama out.